Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here today with James Fellows Yates, and he's going to talk about Inkscape and pipeline diagrams. Thank you very much. So this is a, a repeat of a, um, a uh, talk I gave back at the last Enterprise Hackathon. Um, and what I'll be talking about is basically how to you can make pretty diagrams uh, aimed at improving your documentation. Um, this can be making it more eye-catchy, more accessible, and making people understand better sort of how to run your pipeline and how to interpret it. And so what I'll do is I'll give a very, very brief introduction to what you sort of things you can generate um, with a tool, a tool called Inkscape. And then I'll give a live demo of how you use Inkscape and sort of the, the main components and functionality that I use to make and um, the different uh, pipeline map constructions, uh, which sort of become semi famous, at least on Twitter. And then I'll basically show you how I will would construct a pipeline diagram such as this. And the tool that we're talking about today is um, Inkscape, which is an open source, uh, pretty close to professional quality um, software, which uh, can run on Linux, OS X and Windows, which is really, really nice. It's sort of equivalent to, to Adobe um, Illustrator, I think it is. Um, but open source, so it's free and accessible to everybody. And it's a really, really nice and very quite polished tool. And I really enjoy it um, a lot. And I've been using it for quite a few years now. Um, and the reason why we want to use Inkscape um, is primarily because of the difference between raster and vector images. So when you take a photo, for example, on your phone or with a digital camera, the images that you generate um, are um, uh, raster images. So if you zoom in really, really closely, basically you start getting these very pixely squares of different different cuts, um, which is very nice in many ways. But when you're dealing with um, the web, so which is where a lot of bioinformatic documentation is displayed on, um, we people like to zoom in and uh, zoom out and stretch things and, and modify things in this way. And to make sure like your images look very, very nice, clean and clear, when you're dealing with particularly web documentation, we prefer a, vec a format called vector images. And in particular, the one we'll be using today is SVG. And so the really nice thing is that basically you can zoom, stretch, manipulate, and you always have these smooth, very high definition lines. Um, and the way these SVGs are constructed, which are basically based on sort of coordinate system, is that they um, are very portable. So you can take different components, break it up um, of a particular image and import it into other um, other images. So examples of sort of um, uh, vector images that or things you can do to sort of improve your um, documentation in terms of graphic design when it comes to bioinformatic pipelines, like in NF Core, is for example make design a logo. So here's a couple of examples of NF Core, so Sarek and so Eager. Here's another one that I made um, for a different project. Um, logo is a very good way of making your your pipelines look a bit more professional and sort of more eye-catching in that way, and people are more likely going to trust um, sort of the the quality of the pipeline give it sort of when it has a sort of a brand identity, which is a nice little productive product, uh, productive procrastination if you ever need that. For that. Um, you can also make workflow diagrams. This is one from Eager again. This is a more a general broad overview, which helps to people un sort of understand what are the major components of the diff of the the pipeline and what it does. It doesn't go into too much detail of these are the sections um, and the tools that it uses. Um, and if you want something more detailed, you can make something like this, which is much, uh, which much more shows the um, direct connections between the different components, the different tools um, of, of the particular the pipeline. Um, and so these sort of give you two different um, purposes. One, this is makes it more for like setting the pipeline. This is what it does to sort of pique someone's interest. For example, putting in like a in, a in a publication, whereas this is more um, for the user who's actively going to be interacting with the pipeline, trying to run it. So there are different stages and levels of these such pipeline diagrams you can use to help make your pipeline more accessible from the concept of like what does it do. Um, this format is the one that became uh, quite popular recently, but I've been playing around with other other variants. So this is a new one that I'm coming up with for an ethical tax profiler. So you can. Don't have to stick with the particular one that I saw. Uh, sorry, I showed in a previous um, slide. You can play around with this as well. Um, but all of these diagrams, all of these images are done in Inkscape. 
In addition, it doesn't have to just be diagrams to show um, what you can do in your documentation. Um, another thing that we did with Ego, which is also quite popular and I was quite proud of, is that my um, uh, co-author, Zandra Viganes, she um, drew these very nice sort of schematic slash cartoony diagrams for the output documentation, which helps people to understand better and what they should be looking for when they're doing like quality control in their pipeline runs. So for example, she took um, what you see get from uh, MultiQC. So for example, FastQC in this case, the FastQC section, and drew little cartoony versions of what you should be seeing uh, separated by the three different boxes, but with little notes saying exactly what you are seeing in this and what how you should basically interpret um, your, your the, the results here, which acts a very nice, quick, um, sort of fast reference for people to understand what your pipeline has done at the other end. And um, also it adds a little bit of um, uh, fun, a little bit of color to otherwise often very dry documentation, which can be um, often be very dull and particularly for very big pipelines like Eager and Seric. Um, when you have a lot of output documentation, such things can break things up a little bit easier and make it more, again, more accessible and more fun for a, a user to use. And there's other things you can do with Inkscape. So for example, and um, this is a couple of other things I've done. This was a sort of a schematic overview of how to interpret ancient DNA or sort of some characteristics of ancient DNA. Again, done all in Inkscape. Um, and actually all of these little emojis, they've been ported from another project called OpenMoji. Everything's an SVG and it's very easy to drag and drop it into the, my, um, into this particular, my image, recolor things, uh, change the size and so on. Uh, which is really, really nice. And that's all benefits from this um, vector imaging uh, format. And also you can sort of do more realistic drawings so, uh, via tracing. And again, doing this in Inkscape, um, it's not so cartoony as all the other previous sort of objects. So this is a, a, a tooth cut in half and that's showing how to sample for ancient DNA. But again, you can basically load a, a, a raster image into Inkscape, trace over the top, and basically then fill in the colors and you can get a particularly good representation of the object which again is then very um, manipulable after. So that's all the th things you can do with Inkscape. Um, now what I'd like to do is actually go into Inkscape itself and show you um, some of the basic functionalities that you would need to do to make one of the pipeline diagrams such as this one um, or this one. So when you open Inkscape, it should look something like this. Um, the, out, the UIs should be relatively fam familiar. You've got toolbar right at the top. You've got uh, other toolbars on the sides as well. Um, and it may look a little bit different depending on what sort of operating system you are, you're working on, but generally this is the, the sort of the, the outline you will have, at least in the latest version. You'll also note uh, what you should hopefully see on my uh, screen is a sort of a, a key logger. So you should be able to see what I'm typing. So in the case I use like a shortcut, you can also uh, see that. So keep an eye on that as well. So the most basic thing you can do in Inkscape or with a vector image program is making objects um, and shapes. So I'm gonna write, make here an object, which is a circle. I can make two circles. I can make squares. You can make triangles and convert this to stars and things like that, or hexagons or whatever. Um, you can also resize these. As you can see that when I click on an object, it often will have um, either arrows like this, which you can resize like so. And also sometimes if you click on this um, path editor, which I'll explain in a second, you can also edit with these squares and triangles here. Um, you can, don't have to make sort of um, fixed shapes like that. You can also do lines with a um, the Bezier tool here. So if I click here and click here, I make a line there. And with this Bezier tool, you're generating essentially things called paths. Um, so these objects are sort of fancy paths, but you can also create your own random shapes you would like to make, for example, like this. You're also not fixed to um, having sharp corners or sharp edges. You can also um, bend edges, for example. And also you can modify the actual corners with the button with the options up here to make them curved as well. And so often this path system is how you do like a tracing map as I explained in the previous slide. 
And you can also you can also modify these as well. You can sort of um, break them apart. So the nodes, for example. Oops. Press the right button. Like so, and then join them back together again. And there's many, many different ways you can sort of manipulate these. Uh, I'll just clear up slightly. So another thing you can do is to group objects together. So you have these two objects, and let's say you want to basically, you're happy with the way they are positioned now, and you want to keep this relationship as you sort of manipulate the, the, the image. So if we can click both, so holding shift and clicking the second one, you can press control G, for example, to group them together. And you can see now I'm moving both at the same time, but they're not using their position. Um, furthermore, um, all objects have a sort of an order. So they're sort of overlapping each other. So these you can actually, um, you can modify the, the, that's probably the bad color pairing. Sorry, one second, let's try this. Um, so what you can see here that actually sort of the two rings are overlapping each other and by pressing page up and page down, I'm moving, which is displaying on top. You have these buttons are here as well, which does the same thing. And also move to the very top of the stack. So you can have as many um, objects as you want, for example. And I can send this, this pink one right to the bottom as well, like this. Um, another thing you can do because everything's based on a coordinate system is sort of semi-programmatically reorder everything, um, aligning and distributing them based on some rule or something like this. So let's say I select all of these objects and I want to put them all in a single line. If I go to object and then align and distribute, which should open a panel on the right-hand side here, you have various options on how to arrange and distribute your different objects. So let's say I want them all in a horizontal line. I can press this button here, so center on horizontal axis, and they'll all go into the line here. The same thing also goes for a vertical distribution. Uh, another thing is that maybe you want to have everything somewhat equally spaced out. You can see these are closer than these ones and so on. Um, you can do this with these buttons here on distribute. And then I can blind like that. And you can see now that basically everything is sort of pretty much ordered in exactly the same way. Um, these objects you can also scale and transform. So scaling, for example, like I said before, you can sort of drag like with the arrows here, but you can also go to the transform under the object menu here, and you can scale it up programmatically again. So I want this one to be twice the size. And press apply, you see it's twice the size now. Um, if I get to square, you can also rotate things as well. So let's say 45 degree angle, you get to sort of diamond. Um, you can also do text, and all the text generally is also um, um, vector based. So you can re reorder it, detach them, separate them out, and so on. So, again, clicking this text tool here, I can start writing something. I will say that the latest version of Inkscape, because I think I've accidentally installed the beta version, is a bit slow with the, um, with the text for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. So, it might be a bit how slow here, but you get the idea. You can make it bigger like this. Um, and you can also color in the same way as sort of the objects as well. So another nice thing and important thing for the pipeline diagrams is you often want to be able to, um, as well as align and distribute things as you were doing here, is sort of bind them together in a consistent, the objects together in a consistent manner. So if you press the um, hash key on your keyboard, you can get a grid. And also in the settings under document properties, you can change the size of the grid and the style. And with this, it makes it easier for you to position things correctly. And also when you have the grid on, you can turn on a snapping tool, as you can see up, up here, that you can also turn on with the um, uh, percent key. And with this, you can have different types of um, edge snapping. So what I mean by that is, let's say I have turned on the midpoint snapping. You can see now this little square coming popping up and is basically um, moving your object or the middle of the object in this case to the closest point uh, on the grid here. The same goes for the, the top corner here. You have to get a feeling for exactly where to hold the object, but basically it'll snap it. So this way I can make sure, for example, manually 
I can see on the grid, I want to have everything along this line here, and I'll basically use the snapping to basically alter that accordingly. Um, with coloring, so you can see here in these objects, currently I have um, only colored the outline of the object. This is called a stroke. You can also fill in as well. So for example, if I click, um, oh, no, sorry. Uh, if I go to file, then fill in stroke, which is another menu here, and you can set the colors or not. Why is that not working? Ah, because there we go. The transparent, so all objects can be transparent as well. So let me go back to here. Uh, you can see that basically um, there's two colors. There's the outer line, this is called the stroke. And inside the object, you can have the fill. And these can be independently set, which is very nice. Um, and this applies to any object you, you, you want. You can change the colors based on hex um, uh, colors if you want, or RGB wheels. You can also um, set different stroke styles. So the moment, let's change the color again, some more obvious. You can see there's a solid line. You can also change the thickness of the, of the, the outline. And you can also change the style in terms of like dashes. Let's move that example, um, like so. So there's a lot of lots of flexibility in this in this manner as well. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to go with a web-based uh, color, you can, like I said, you can use these hex in, uh, uh, hex codes down the bottom. So, as an example, if I were to go to the NF4 graphics guidelines page, which is under the documentation and contributing. You can see, for example, here under fonts and colors, we have the official RGB uh, values and also the hex value for this particular, the NF core green. So if I switch back here, I can change the stroke of this object to the green as so. Again, or rather the fill in this case, sorry. Oop, and turning off the transparency. And now this is the NF core green. Um, sometimes, in some cases, you may not want an SVG as the final image. You want to have it in a different format. That is also possible to, to do. So if you go to File and Export, you have the option to export, for example, as a PNG image. You can just change it at different resolutions, depending on sort of whether you're going to be printing or putting on the web and things like that as well. And this means that you also have that flexibility for different formats. Um, how am I doing for time? Okay. Now, we can move on to the question, which is how would you actually create the pipeline diagrams? Now, you could create all the different components yourself separately, um, but that, speaking from experience, uh, the first time I did this, that can take a lot of time. So what we made for the NF Core um, website on, again, the graphics design guidelines is actually a cheat sheet with all the different components that you can use to make a pretty uh, even, even um, evenly spaced and distributed pipeline diagram. We also have other components here you can download, for example, examples of other pipelines. If you want to mod modify these, you can check the license uh, licenses on over here. There's different components. For example, for Sarek, um, Maxime made very nice file icons, which you can also download and use in your own um, pipeline diagrams. But for this example, I'll just use the ones for the pipeline um, components, which I made before. So I can simply save this as a file and then drag this particular file into my Inkscape here, which is okay. And you can see here now I've got all of the objects there. So like I emphasized before, nice thing about SVG images because it's basically based on these coordinate systems, um, they can be rendered in many different ways. And also downloading it and importing this file into my document means I can actually now detach the different components of this and reuse them. So for example, I could take, let's say my starting point and drag this over here. If I follow the grid, I will snap it with the midpoint snap here. Then I could take um, the straight line here and drag this over here and stick it on there. I could put a, another uh, station and put that here. But let's say now I want to do a, a, a split so I want to have basically um, two different um, uh, lines because I've, let's say, optional pipeline, sorry, mutually exclusive optional um, steps of the pipeline. I can copy and paste this over here. And then by pressing H or V, I can also flip and rotate the objects in that manner. 
So I will again snap with the midpoint here and the same thing here and connect that there. Oops. There we go, the point. Um, an important thing to, to emphasize, as you may have already noticed, I'm just copying and pasting. And like, I'd say 80% of my Inkscape work is basically copying and pasting components I've already made. So that is why uh, we made this cheat sheet. So I'd highly recommend basically reusing this as well, but of course you can modify them in whatever way you want. Um, but to get a, a basic outline, I'd recommend trying something like this. Um, so modifying, let's say I don't like this green color and I prefer to let me ungroup this. I want a different color. I can let's say change this to a red. And up here I would like this to have a purple and this would want to be a, a blue, or sorry, a blue. And I basically just keep working on this and construct things um, in this sort of very Lego-like fashion is my sort of main um, recommendation in this case. I could then also basically add a station name, I call it, let's say, input. I put this up here, put this down here, say step one. You can also change the font of your, uh, of your text. So for example, if you want to use the NF Core font, we have the things called Maven Pro, exactly. You can set this here as well. Um, and the final thing is maybe once you've completed your, your image, you want to not have this weird A4 sort of sized uh, page. You can also actually go to File, Document Properties, and modify the sort of layout in this way. So for example, setting is horizontal, sorry, uh, landscape. And also you can actually resize the page to content. If I press this button here, you can see that basically the page has been resized to cover all the different drawings that you may have in the particular document. Um, and this is pretty much it. Um, the one other thing I would recommend doing before actually starting such a sort of a diagram is already have um, a, um, a working sort of doodle or diagram of your um, of your pipeline, um, because sometimes this can get a bit fiddly when you're trying to work out exactly where everything should be spaced. So for example, for NFCore Tax Profiler, we used um, Google Drawings um, to basically sketch out already all of the different um, parts of the pipeline. It's a bit easier to um, move things around here by snapping them together. And then you can use this basically as a, a reference to how to um, make your, your actual final sort of uh, workflow documentation. So for example, we could take the example at the top, if I can, there we go. Let's say this is the input, I have the two splits here, then I'd sort of set it up like this and basically follow along the guidelines. So I do that here. So that is pretty much it. That is the basics of what you need to, to learn. Um, so to recap, you have all these objects you can make, but generally when you come into the pipeline diagrams, it's better to try and reuse components you already made. Copying and pasting is your friend. Um, you can color things via the menu in the objects and fill in stroke. And you have the fill, which is the sort of the outline of the object and the, the sorry, the stroke is the outline of the object and the fill is the inside of the object. You can stretch, manipulate all of the objects, either sort of manually by these sort of handles or also programmatically with the transform and line and distribute objects. Um, so otherwise, uh, also have fun doing it. Again, it's productive procrastination. It does make a influence. A lot of people um, call their eye, for example, on the eager pipeline um, because of such workflow diagrams. Um, we have a graphics design channel uh, on Slack, which you also, or I think it's graphics, um, which you can join as well if you have any questions. Um, but otherwise, I think that is it. So thank you very much. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. So um, are there any questions in the audience? Uh, I have also allowed yourself to un uh, allowed to unmute yourself now, if anyone wants to say something. Otherwise, um, thank you very much, James. And um, I want to also thank the Jan Zuckerberg uh, Initiative for funding these talks. And as usual, you can continue the discussion on Bite Size uh, Slack channel. Bite Size, yes. <laughs> and um, thank you again. <laughs>